All right there. Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is Drawing Together, where we meet every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern, to draw together. I'm Scott Meyer. This is Artist Network. Um, so this is what we're working on today, this drawing of this truck. Um, and one of the things I wanted to kind of talk about today is kind of the difference between sketching and drawing. And if there is one, they kind of overlap very similar uh, kind of concepts there, but I, I kind of intentionally chose a different approach here to try to simulate what it might be like to be in uh, on the location here, drawing from life, kind of wandering across this old truck, wanting to sketch it quickly and see how we can kind of take some of the, the tools from today in the studio and prepare ourselves for working on location. So that's kind of what we're focusing on today. If you want to follow along, you can find the image that's below me here in the description. So just open that up, draw along with us. And then when you're done, you can go to artistnetwork.com and share your work with us. So I pinned a link to the top of the chat where you can, um, you can find the episode page, find more drawing resources and share your work. So we saw some awesome drawings lately. We got the canyon, we had the, the whale, this one behind me that we did a couple weeks ago, some really amazing drawings there. So um, let's get to it. Um, it looks like things are a little bit uh, clunky. Let me see if I can smooth things out a little bit. Um, this always happens, especially towards the beginning of the episode for some reason, it, everything gets a little kind of jerky. So. Uh, let's get to it. Today, the materials just as a, a smooth white drawing paper, nothing fancy here. So if you just have a sketchbook or any sort of paper, this is really all about just kind of picking up materials and going. I like the idea of drawing with whatever materials you have on hand. I think a, a classic yellow number two pencil is just about the best tool out there because you can do a lot with it and it seems like there's always one around somewhere. Um, so if that's all you have, great. There's really no need to follow along with the specific tools, but this is what I'm using today. Um, I had originally listed a different set of materials um, that I, that's what I actually used to draw this, but um, when working with graphite on the camera, it can sometimes not show up very well. So I'm kind of dropping things down in value a little bit. So my lighter one is actually gonna be a 3B today. So that's pretty dark when it comes to graphite pencils. Um, and then I have my two onyx pencils. I've got a medium and I've got a dark here. Um, but like I said, you should be able to kind of follow along with whatever material you have here. Cause this is all about just picking up whatever you've got and going out on location and drawing. Um, and of course, drawing this truck, I, I had a few requests very early on in this series, and this is what episode 84. <laughs> so like, we've gone a long way and I haven't drawn a vehicle. And one of the reasons is because it's hard, <laughs> at least for me. So let's, uh, let's kind of do our best and I'll try to walk you through my thought process as I, as I get into it. And I'd love to hear as we're going along, what things you might be doing differently, uh, you know, if you have a different approach or any suggestions for me, I like to hear it. So I love to see things happening in the chat. So that's, that's what it's all about here. Um, so I'm gonna set that aside and we'll get going. So I'm gonna pick up my 3B pencil if I can find it. Oh, uh, I don't need the blending stump today, which is a, a, a kind of a, a tool that we've been using a lot. And the erasers I'll be using, I'm just gonna use this uh, retractable rubber eraser that I have kind of sharpened down to this point to give us a nice fine line and then my, my uh, kneaded eraser. So again, relatively simple materials that we're working with today. Um, uh, it, I'm getting some error messages on YouTube, but I think things are going all right. Um, if not, um, just let me know. Uh, I'm gonna try a few things. See if we can kind of smooth it out. It just seems like every day, we, every time we go live, something happens. <laughs> and so I'm gonna do my best to try to keep adjusting and tweaking the settings to try to get things smooth, but it being live, it's, it is what it is. So, all right. So I'm going to, I just need to refresh my page. Um, I like to start all my drawings off with gestures. In my mind, really the entire drawing process is about refining the gesture. So it all starts with that. Um, and it, it's really just our initial impression reacting to the, um, reacting to the subject uh, and just kind of going with our gut feel. Now, having done this already once before, it's kind of training a, a different muscle memory for me. So I might be able to get to the correct perspective and proportions more quickly. 
Um, so just something to keep in mind, you know, I do a preparatory sketch uh, to help can help me identify the key issues that we want to discuss. Um, and so I do a, a drawing in advance and that, that kind of gets me moving. Um, and so just kind of, I'm, I'm kind of mentioning that. So if you're kind of struggling with this one, just know that, you know, the drawing is all about, you know, just it's the continual practice. That's what we do. And that's what this show is all about. It's not about necessarily making something that we're going to be hanging up on the wall or giving to other people or, you know, something that is going to be kind of a um, kind of more professionally uh, oriented. Um, and so just, like I said, be a little forgiving for yourself. Um, one of the things that I'm, I'm kind of noticing now is like with, with the gesture, in addition to kind of just getting us going um, and kind of warming our brains up a little bit, um, it, it also helps us to see, first off, is everything's going to fit on the page. And so what had happened is I, as I was starting my initial scale, I realized that the front end is going to run off the side of the page. So I've got to make things a little bit smaller so that they fit. And I like to leave my marks directly on the page. And so I can kind of see this uh, record on the page of where those marks have moved around. And if I use this light overhand grip, I'm not creating any marks here that are going to give me trouble later on. I can erase these down. So, um, all right, I'm glad everything looks good on your end. Everything over here, it looks, I'm just seeing little warning things from YouTube, but as I experienced last time, I may see it on my end, but everybody else is going fine. So um, if you are running into any trouble or if things cut out, then um, just kind of stick with us and we will do our best to get it back up and running. Um, so with this grip that I like to use, this kind of overhand grip, you can see how far back I'm holding the pencil. And that allows me to really just use the weight of the pencil uh, to indicate the marks. And, and that's good because I don't want to emboss the page. Once I've, when I switch to this tripod grip and I, I, and I allow that pencil tip to, to work into the paper, then it's going to create a more embossed line, which is just something that we'd have to contend with later. Um, so again, at this stage, I'm just kind of reacting to the shapes as I see them. So it's a lot of quick movements back and forth from the reference photo to the page. Um, and in this case, I have the screen in front of me so I can see the reference image next to the drawing. And that allows me to compare things a little bit more easily. So if you do have that ability to have the reference image and drawing um, right next to one another. Oh, and I see. Um, I see the, the reference is cropped a little bit, so let me adjust that. There we go. And I actually see that tail end of the truck. Um, that would help. Um, so again, I'm just working on that initial gesture, and then I want to walk you through my thought process as we, as we start to correct. So you can kind of break the process down um, in a way where we're we start with the gesture, adjust the proportions, and then we move into finishing. Those are the three main phases. Um, and I prefer to work that way uh, because if, I, if you get to the finishing too early, and I know if you've been with us for a while, you've heard me say this numerous times, if you get to the finishing too early, then we can sometimes overlook the overall proportions. Things just don't fit together the way they need to. And, um, and I've just learned from enough drawing experience that if we don't have those basic proportions worked out, um, you can spend all of this time just uh, working on the final details only to realize that they're not fitting together the way they should. And then they're really the only way around it is to, um, is just to keep, just kind of start over, uh, or rework those areas again. And so it's really just out of efficiency that I kind of think this way. And I know many artists do, it's nothing unique or anything, but um, I just try to encourage you to kind of stay with the gesture as long as possible. And that's where, when I, when I said earlier on, is that for me, the drawing is really all about refining the gesture. And it keeps me thinking about the drawing constantly as a gesture, as something that's fluid and moving around. Uh, sometimes we can get stuck in our thinking um, with regards to the marks and we, we make them more permanent than they, they need to be. You don't want to move them around. Okay, so one of the key tools here is angle sighting. 
Um, so if you're new and you don't know what angle sighting is, what I'm doing is I have the reference image in front of me, I have the drawing over here, and I close one eye, and that gives you, uh, it gives you monocular vision. It flattens your depth perception. So when you close one eye and you use your pencil as a guide, you can line it with any of the edges that you're targeting. So in this case, if I'm looking at the angle of the bumper, I can close my eye, align the pencil with that bumper, swing it over, just kind of lock that wrist so the angle doesn't move, and place it on top of the drawing. And then from there, you can see what, how that aligns with your initial gesture and, um, and adjust from there. And so what I'm looking at are, are generally the, the paths for, say, that bumper, uh, visualize a line that connects the two um, headlights, uh, look at a general angle for the roof, even though there's that curve, try to visualize it as a straight line. and try to visualize it as a sequence of short straight marks rather than as curves. And what you're going to notice generally in perspective, the way, if you, if you don't know kind of the, the specifics of linear perspective, the one thing that can be really helpful is to know that is, is to be aware of the horizon line. So horizon line generally equates to your eye level. If you're looking straight out across the ground plane, your eye is going to be um, going to lead you to your, your eye level. So in this case, we're, we're a little bit high on the truck. Um, so the eye level is going to be somewhere around here. And the lines are going to radiate up to meet that. They're going to radiate out from a vanishing point. So in this case, as we work up to the horizon line, things become more horizontal. As you move down, they kind of radiate outward. And so as you look at the lines here, as I, as I look at these two, for example, they're right now, they're identical. They're, act, they're physically parallel with one another. Um, but it looks off because if you were to follow the rules of perspective, this should be actually slightly angled slightly more horizontal than this one down in here. So now I have to ask myself, is this correct or is this line correct? And I'm going to do use my angle sighting to adjust that. And then in this case, in this case, it's this I feel is correct. This angle here is incorrect. And so I can, I can start to adjust that and, and level this out just a little bit more. So you look at these major lines and they should gradually lead you from a steeper angle at the bottom to a more horizontal angle at the top. And then the same would be true for these angles here. And so that way, if you think about it generally, um, then you can start to make some final adjustments just visually, or if you need to, you can get a longer straight edge and you can actually trace these lines out and see if these main lines converge at a common point, at the vanishing point as you need to. So um, I like to think of perspective as more of an intuitive thing. Uh, uh, I get kind of bogged down when I start to think about um, specifics and, and really let the rules of linear perspective guide me. Uh, so I don't know how you all feel about perspective, but I'd be kind of curious to see how you all feel about it. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people get it, but um, don't utilize it a whole lot. Um, so just looking at the angle for this central uh, piece, the divider in the head, the, the windshield. And so in this, it, it, what I'm going to do here is basically stay with this gestural thinking and keep focusing on the proportions. The more time you spend here, the better. Uh, if we, I know we want to get to kind of the, the finer lines and the details, but just trust me, if you spend more time on the, on the, uh, on the proportions and the perspective early on, it's all going to serve you in the end. You'll get to those details much more rapidly. And like I said, I find it more effective to think about um, these curves, kind of break them down into shorter, straighter marks. You're going to end up with a more specific curve that way. So start as a sequence of straight lines and then gradually refine them rather than try to strike that curve. Because we have a tendency to want to create perfect circles when we look at this, they're actually not perfect circles. Um, Wilma is saying, um, Oh, well, I'm not saying I should write a book. I'm actually working on a book right now. So I'll be, that'll be coming out in uh, just under a year. At the start of next year, it'll be out and published in the, in the stores. 
but I appreciate those comments. Um, oh, Colleen is saying there's some, it's kind of a jerky um, stream. So I'm, I wonder if I can, that's what I'm noticing it on my end. So I, oh, Cindy's saying you love perspective. That's awesome. Let me see if I can um, smooth things up a little bit. All right, I'm making a little, a few adjustments, see if this helps. Um, I don't know why, it just, it, sometimes it does this, it, uh, the signal coming out just it gets bogged down and it's really frustrating. Um, so, all right, <laughs> thanks Colleen. All right, um, okay, back to the truck. So one of the things that I also struggled with, with with this one here is treating it as a line drawing, it just, um, when it was purely line, it just was too weak. So then I started building shading and I, I struggled with uh, trying to focus on line. And I really wanted to make this just a linear drawing, but it, it doesn't look very good. <laughs> I didn't do a very good job. And so now I'm just starting to shade. I kind of blocked in that background. Um, and in part of it is just because it, everything just felt clunky and heavy. Um, and that's going to be one of the focuses on this um, is, um, is just, I don't know, how, how, to, how to work with the lines on this to make it not look heavy and clunky. Um, and it's hard to describe that without actually seeing it. So we'll, I'll do my best, but I, I'm kind of mentioning that now because I want to take some time just to kind of build up tone on the page. And that this is one of the things that we've talked about before in this, in this series. I like to build up tone in part because it just, it enriches the drawing to some degree. It gives me a little bit more substance. Um, and I thought about working with pen and ink for this actually to help, um, it just kind of boosts the contrast, but I um, I got a little self-conscious because I'm not very good at working with that medium, so I need to practice with it a bit more. So I kind of stuck with what I'm more comfortable with, and I, I'm not really uh, practicing what I preach here about you know drawing being all about you know, trying new things. <laughs> and so I recognize the inconsistency here. So. Um, But I think for me, I, I really need to make a mess on the page. Uh, and that's what kind of I, I kind of learned about myself in this is because I think I had in my mind that I wanted to create something that's clean, crisp, um, and, and it just doesn't, I keep falling back to just making a mess on the page and then trying to pull something out of that. Um, and uh, so, but I'm going to keep keep practicing. So what I'm doing now is again, just building up tone on the page. Um, and then we can actually use the eraser to create some, uh, some lines there. Uh, and, and so just to kind of stay on that topic of line, there are two kind of fundamental ways to approach drawing a form. Uh, there's, a, there's line and then there's mass or shape. Uh, mass is probably more specific of a term because it really kind of defines a three-dimensional object. Um, but line also uh, defines a three-dimensional object. So if we're, we're thinking about the two major terms there, you have outlines and you have contour lines. Most, most often we'll refer to, we'll use the term outlines, uh, but really what an outline is, is a line that follows the two-dimensional shape of an object. A contour line specifically is a line along the edge of an object that's designed to indicate its three-dimensional quality, its form. Um, so contour lines, I think, are far more valuable than outlines. Outlines really just encircle a form, a contour line encircles a form, but with the intention of creating a uh, three-dimensional form. And then when you're thinking linearly like that with a contour line, you also have what are called cross-contour lines, which we're going to use a lot here. Those are lines within the form that are used to define the, the perspective, the structure of that object. Um, and so we'll use those. Um, and so you may not actually see a line um, on that object, but you might use one to help kind of indicate you know, how it wraps around the space. Um, one of the things that I'm also noticing really is, is really kind of tripping me up in this one in particular 
is the fact that I have to um, contort myself to get at certain angles. I realize now, thinking back to that preparatory one, how much I was moving that paper around uh, in order to get these correct angles. So it'll be a, a fun challenge today. All right. So I'm just kind of building up tone there. Um, and that's really just to help me control some contrast a little bit, even though I'm going to be working mostly linearly. All right, so now I'm back to defining the proportions of the truck. You can see the faint line there. Um, oh, just want to, I see some questions here. Uh, actually, Greg, I see your comment there. I'll see what I can do. Um, uh, yeah, I would uh, I, I will see what I can do about that. I don't really know how it works. It's my first go around with a book, so. Um, Let's see. Yeah, oh, passing through. Welcome. A new name. I don't recognize this one, so I don't know if you've been watching or have. I just missed your comments before, but welcome. But yes, camera camera lenses do distort significantly, which can be awesome. So if you do like to work from uh, a photograph, then you can um, use that to your advantage, um, or you can kind of. Uh, you just it's something to be aware of that you might end up having to kind of fight in your own work. Uh, I know one of the artists that I really admire is an artist by the name of Rackstraw Downs, um, and he is, does he, you know he works from life, and he does these amazing perspective images. Like he'll he'll create a full kind of fish eye looking, you know, space. He's really paying attention to what your experience is on in look on the location. It's he's really reacting to how it feels in in that space and letting those lines and edges distort, letting straight lines curve through space. And a camera can help kind of show that because so much of what happens in perspective is our brain is correcting things. So optically, a, a line might be curved, but it's on a straight object. So or what our brain does is it corrects that curve, it adjusts that perspective so that we understand that it's actually a straight line. It's just being distorted um, in our uh, in our field of vision because of the nature of our eye being a lens. And so it's a, it can, we're, we're often just kind of fighting things in our brain. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of focusing on this as an anchor. I feel like as a whole, I've got generally, if I, if I, if I kind of lock this in as in terms of its scale and perspective, um, then I can build everything else around that. Um, so I want to do a quick, what I'm looking at now is I'm, I'm taking an angle between these two corners here and I'm comparing that between the reference and the drawing and I'll do another angle. And it's just another way to double check. So I'm just kind of looking at, at these two angles and then comparing these angles as well. So you've ultimately got six angles that you can use to create this one window. And then estimating the, uh, the, the scale of it and the proportions, the height versus the width. And one of the things can get really tricky as you, as you get closer to your eye level, um, it gets really tricky to see what the angles actually are. So this is where closing one eye really helps. Um, so when you, when you look at these angles here, sometimes it can be difficult to tell whether it's angle, actually angling down or up or perfectly horizontal because again, our brains are, are, are kind of adjusting the optical information um, and can give us kind of false understanding. And so often it'll feel like it's going down because we recognize it as going back in space when optically it's actually going up at an, at their angle. So you gotta always be checking those things and questioning um, the way things act, feel versus the way things look. Um, the, uh, the, the, it, when, as you get here, it's kind of like, I don't know if anybody has ever tried to tune a guitar by ear. <laughs> like that's something that I'm really not good at. But when you get close to getting that note, it, it gets really hard to tell whether you need to kind of go up or down in order to, to match the note. And I think the same thing happens with a lot of features, a lot of elements in drawing. Um, and one of them in particular are these lines that are close to the horizon line. You know, as we come down here, it's really easy to see that this is an angle. It's kind of sloping up in this direction. As you get, as you move across there, it can sometimes, uh, you can get tricked into to thinking that it's actually moving in the opposite direction than it is. So just kind of throwing that out there so that, um, that you kind of take some time to double check 
And so as I, and, and you're always kind of looking for more than one dimension when you're, um, when you're correcting the proportion. So as I look at the angles here, for example, and I'm drawing this, the angle of that tailgate of the truck, you might be focusing on the angle, but then also pay attention to the intersection. So at, at this point, it intersects that vertical edge of the cab, and then compare that to the reference. Um, and so right now, I'm pretty close, but I feel like it should come up a little bit higher. So then you, gotta, you have the angle, but you might have to move that up and, or down a little bit. Um, And then, then we have this, the roof here is tricky because it's got a curve to it. And it's generally horizontal right here and then kind of curves down. And this, I think it needs to be a little bit more angled. All right, <laughs> road trip. All right, everybody, it'd be awesome. It'd be cool to do some sort of in-person event, huh? Um, uh, Marie is saying, so angle, so true. My side window was angling down through the roof angle off. Yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned that. So if anybody else is experiencing that too, it's it's one of those things that can get really frustrating. <laughs> so um, because again, we're fighting that that part of our brain that is correcting things. So again, our, our brain is taking all this information in, but it's making decisions about what's important and what's not. Uh, and so for, the way I like to think about it with perspective is, you know, if you're, if you're looking down a hallway, for example, optically, the, 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 the optical truth of that is that those lines receding away from you, as they get close to you, they're actually curving, right? It's, it's just like in a fisheye lens in a camera. Those lines are optically bending and then it enters our retina, goes down our optic nerve into our brain where our brain takes that signal and it has to make sense of it. And what it'll do is it, your brain has to decide what's more important here. Is it the optical truth or is it the literal truth? The optical truth is that everything is actually curving around us. The literal truth is that it's a straight wall. Those are straight lines and they're parallel. Um, and it's more valuable to us to recognize the literal truth of something. It's better for us to know that those are straight lines. And so then it takes that optical signal and it converts that. Um, and so that's the part that we're always fighting. And it's, it's all designed to, um, it's all designed for us to, um, to really make sense of the world. And now we basically, we have to tell our brains what's important now <laughs> is to, just to think about what the optical truth is and tell me really what I'm seeing, not what the truth of the object is. Then you build that into your drawing and then the viewer kind of, uh, kind of reverse engineers that, takes all of the, 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 the stuff that you've done on the page and takes away from it the literal truth. So um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that makes sense. It gets confusing for sure. All right, so again, I'm just kind of breaking it down. Now, one of the things that I wanna be doing is thinking about plumb lines and horizontal guides. So plumb lines are vertical lines that extend, they pass through the drawing um, up from any sort of key feature, anything you're starting to target. So if I look at this front corner, for example, if I were to visualize a line that extends upward, I can see where it passes through features of the truck. So you can see how it relates in particular to this back edge here. Um, and that'll help us to kind of to ch check our perspective and our proportions. And then you have this front fender here. And I can draw a plumb line here and, and kind of adjust from that. And all, it just adds, it builds that information. We have, we're just, all we're doing is we're gathering information about this truck and we're using the drawing process to express the, the development of our, our knowledge here. And then horizontal guides work uh, similarly, they're just horizontal lines. So for example, I could take this tailgate, this corner here, visualize a horizontal line and see where it passes through the truck, compare that to my drawing and make adjustments from there. You can find other key features. So if you wanna take like that, that back wheel, for example, that can be a feature. 
you can uh, visualize a horizontal line moving across there and compare that to the drawing. So I feel like we're, we're getting closer, um, but like I said, uh, take your time at this stage. Uh, what I did in my initial drawing is I jumped to the rendering far too early um, and I, it did not help me in the end. I ended up having to erase a lot of stuff and essentially just start over again. Um, now, one of the other advantages to toning the page too is it provides a layer of graphite that allows the marks to kind of move around a bit more. And again, I like, I, I haven't really erased anything at this point. Um, all those initial marks that are incorrect have just been kind of consumed by that background. And for me, it's really helpful because um, I'm also kind of now fighting muscle memory. Once you've drawn a mark, it gets easier to draw that mark again. And what I've found before is I've worked on drawings and you know I'll, I'll make a mark, see, feel like it's the wrong, erase it down, do another mark, only to realize that I just duplicated what I had just erased. And so I've learned to just leave the marks on the page and use those as uh, kind of reminders of, uh, and indicators of where I want to move away from. So just kind of keep that in mind. And I'm just using the side of the pencil again and keeping the marks light and loose until we're really confident that things are placed where they need to go. Um, I'm gonna visualize, there's this nice shadow across the hood here that helps me to identify that form. This, this line here is where I spent a lot of time because you have, there's so much going on in that line with regards to the form. You have the, the top plane of that hood moving across this way, but it's also crowned. There's a, there's a dimension to it. It's curved as we move back into space, it's kind of curved. So we've got this compound curve um, working together here. And then we also have a curve this way. And if we get those lines right, our brain will interpret it that way without us really having to be aware of it, be, you don't have to think too much about it. Um, and then we, as we move back in here again, we have this, it's generally, it's got this angle, but you have these curves over the, the hood. And that is, that's where it gets fun. Uh, starting to look now at some of the, the lines um, through the window. And I can kind of block that in. Not worried about overrunning any of the marks. I haven't done any cleanup yet. We'll clean up with the eraser soon. Actually, this whole window should be relatively dark. And this isn't going to be about really getting the values right, but I want to get the uh, general, then get them generally correct. Get in the ballpark. Fabio does not like what's happening right now. <laughs> um, do we, uh, uh, Jin Chao uh, Lu is asking, do we leave the wheel for last? That's a good question. I'm right, right now, again, I'm focusing on the body of the truck. I keep coming back to this as my anchor for the proportions. Um, and then what I'm looking at, what I need to look at now is this dimension here. This feels a little high to me. Like I feel like I've come down here too far. So I'm kind of like working my way down. And how do I want to fix that? I need to, um, need to find that angle. So what I'm going to do is, I'm kind of in my way in the shot right now. All right, I'm taking this angle here. So if I'm confident in this, or if I'm gonna set this corner as, the, as an anchor, I'm gonna look down at this angle, and that's gonna help me place this. So as, a, as this angle becomes more steep, that pushes this line down. So it's another way to kind of double check the, the proportions. Um, and I keep getting in my way of the shot, here we go. Yeah, so that's that, that. What that does is that brings that up. And so to get back to your comments about the uh, 
um, the wheels, I haven't placed those yet because those are kind of like the eyes on a portrait. <laughs> there's, they kind of, they, I want to go to those and there's a tendency to then not adjust them. So what I found is that it's gotten me into trouble before if I, if I draw those wheels in too early. And, and so now what I'm doing is I'm kind of building that body and actually things have to come up a little bit and that's going to adjust the wheel. So I had lightly indicated them early on. And uh, so now I need to go back in and, and now I can place them a little bit more accurately. Something seems off here. That seems way too wide. So I am going to, I think I need to bring the whole back end of the truck in. And again, I can just kind of smooth this out and that mark will just get lost at some point. Well, it'll disappear for the most part. I can clean it up a little bit later. So I, one of the things that kind of fell off that train of thought, you know, and I'd be curious to hear what you all, how you all think of this question is, but what is, what is the relationship between sketching and drawing? Is there a difference in your mind? And are they the same? And if they are different, in what way? Is it like all sketches are drawing, but not all drawings are sketches, something like that? Um, be kind of curious, but this is that kind of got me thinking about it because, um, again, the, the kind of the setup for this project is to help us build skills so that we could be on location, we could be wandering around the uh, you know a junkyard or something, come across a cool truck, and then and be captivated by it and sit down and sketch it. You know, so um, What is that relationship between a sketch and a drawing? So this, this is still kind of throwing me off here. So what I'm doing is just looking at, um, I need to get the, the dimensions of the wheel well a little bit more accurate. Bring that tire in. And we'll, I'm going to talk about kind of ellipses and things that I've perhaps, you know, have helped me with ellipses. These, I'm drawing the tires. I'll correct that a little bit later. But I'll see if that, I think that helps a little bit. All right. Um, Okay, I do want to just indicate that back edge just a little bit more, give myself a little bit more substance. That feels a little bit better, but I think I need to come back to this. And so this is a situation now where uh, this hasn't been resolved. I, need, I know I need to make adjustments to this, but I don't know what I need to do. And so I like to just, I, that's kind of running now in the background of my mind. It's something that my brain is now chewing on, and I'm going to come back to it. Um, rather than continue to fight through that spot, I'm going to move on to something else and, and keep working another area uh, because then that might actually help me a little bit. So, for example, as I move to this front wheel well, what could be happening back here is that if this is off, I'm trying to draw this in this context, and this is actually throwing this off. It's making it harder to adjust that. Uh, so I, it, that may not be the case, but it may be the case. And so um, that's why I'm kind of moving on to another section to, uh, to see if that leads me to anything uh, better. Um, so uh, one of the things that I'm doing here is, is I'm looking at that, the, the oval, the ellipse for the, the wheel. Um, I'm kind of working both the, the wheel well and the tire together. Um, and paying attention to these intersection points. Um, and so trying to really focus on the relationship between those two, rather than just get kind of consumed in the shape of that tire. Uh, so just kind of 
something to kind of put out there. And so as I'm drawing the inner hubcap, for example, that inner portion of the wheel, I can start to look at the distance between the um, this part of the, the wheel well and that it kind of gauge that distance. Um, and one of the things as we start to refine this, we'll really look at the spacing and how that changes in the wheel to, to indicate the correct perspective. Because with tires, you have a general kind of cylindrical form, but you have also the same thing we were talking about with the hood where you have these compound curves that you then can indicate using line. Um, uh, I do, I see a bunch of comments coming in. I want to get back to it because I asked that question about drawing and sketch. So I want to kind of get back to that real quick. Um, let's see. Uh, Marina is saying perhaps sketching is more loose, drawing more structured. Um, and then Art Bloom is asking about the choosing the reference. Do I spend hours and hours? I do. <laughs> I like spent a lot of time trying to find the right reference. And, and so the reference image, I, I kind of look for things a little bit differently than um, it, because it's designed for this, this show. And I'm looking for things that are going to translate well into a black and white drawing. And so often, sometimes it can be kind of a boring photograph, but it'll show a, a strong contrast between light and shadow. And I chose this car for, um, specifically because I liked this three quarter angle. It, it gives me a lot to work with versus a profile or a straight on shot. Um, or if the lighting is flat, then there may not be as much to kind of sink our teeth into. So that's, I, I kind of think about it a little bit differently, but yeah, I do spend a lot of time. Um, for my own personal work though, I take my own photos if I do, or I, I mostly work from life though. So if you do get a chance to work from life, that's always gonna be more helpful. Having said that, working from a photograph, you can learn a lot from that too, so. Um, uh, Aaron is saying a drawing is more realistic and precise. Um, it's a good question. Uh, sketch leaves out the details. Uh, Greg is saying a sketch to me denotes more rough, loose approach just to get ideas on the paper, whereas a drawing could be any time you make marks on the paper. Sally is saying, personally, I find some photos call to my heart and then I put those in a separate file. Nice. Um, so yeah, hopefully that, yeah, like, I know a lot of people that work from photographs and I think, you know, where we come up with our ideas, it's, that's what's kind of unique to each of us, which is really cool. So uh, Sally, it sounds like you've got a good process there. Um, and then Klaus, welcome. Uh, uh, Van Gogh says, uh, Sally is a good comment. Van Gogh says, sketches were essential to finally doing their incredible paintings, nice. And then Brenda, sketching for me gives the idea of what I want to do for drawing is a more, a detailed picture of what I put in a sketch, a picture with all the shading and shadowing and nice. And I think that that makes a lot of sense to me. And it, it kind of brings back to something that we focused a lot early on in this whole series is that the word drawing for me, there is the drawing and then there's drawing. So when you're sketching, you are drawing, but perhaps there's a difference between a drawing and a sketch. Um, but I think, Greg, I think something that you said that it kind of stands out to me is, is the, the idea of the, the thought. Uh, Jen is saying, uh, your marks are more fun and gestural when I sketch. I usually prefer my sketches to my drawings. That's nice. Yeah, like to me, um, the, again, with sketching, it, it starts to become more of a, um, a, an expression of what's happening in your mind. Right? And we've talked about this before, that marks are thoughts. Uh, marks, any mark that we make on the page starts as an electrical impulse in the mind. It travels down our arm into our pencil, onto the page, and that gets really exciting. And sketching to me, kind of, it reduces that barrier between the thought and the mark a little bit. Um, I love seeing the sketches of great artists because you can kind of see their brain kind of chewing on a problem as they're, they're working on it. And then perhaps the drawing becomes more of a, of a, a refined version of that um, once certain problems have been solved. So I don't know, good things to kind of think about. So, um, all right, how are we feeling about these proportions? This tire, so now if, this is the, one of the, the fun parts about perspective is that as things come together on the page, your brain starts to understand the perspective better and it can see when things are off. So now I look at this back tire and it looks way too off. It looks huge. Even though physically it's probably smaller, it is smaller in scale than this one, 
but because I have the perspective of the, of the truck established, it doesn't, it doesn't fall in line with that. And so I need to, um, I need to make some adjustments there to the perspective. This is where I can use the eraser to kind of adjust. So what I'm doing is now visualizing a line between the, the connection points of the ground plane of the tires. And if that line falls in perspective, that can, that's going to help guide my, um, my uh, rendering of that, that tire. And I can switch back and forth also between the positive space, drawing the tire, and the negative space, that shape around the tire. And that kind of makes it a little bit smaller there. Hopefully it's a bit more correct. But what I can, what I see happening is right now my brain is, is isolating, right? I'm just focusing on this. <laughs> and when I, when you do that, that's the kind of the nature of focus. When you focus on something, you necessarily shut everything else down. That's what focus is. Um, and I need to now step back and really look at the whole context to double check my proportions. And so I think this, this wheel well needs to come down a little bit more. And we've got this cool, it's all kind of wrecked up back there. And, I, and now what I want to do is kind of clean this up and Right now, the marks are now inhibiting my understanding of the form, so I need to use an eraser to kind of sharpen that up. And now, let's see, come across here. And now I'll try to visually connect those, the two wheel wells with this running board here. Um, sorry, I just kind of stopped talking there for a little bit because I'm trying to work through this problem and sometimes it's hard to multitask. So apologize for that. But how's everybody else doing? Your drawings coming together okay? Uh, I'm gonna, I need, think I need to build some light and shadow a little bit more um, because that's another thing, just like perspective, understanding the light and shadow structure, it, it starts to affect your interpretation of the shape. You know, so this is literally a two-dimensional object here, but we're starting to create the illusion of three dimensions. And when we do that, that interferes and that impacts our um, understanding of perspective and the proportion. So I need to come back into this. This is another tricky spot. Um, uh, with regards to the perspective, because we have these compound curves. And um, so I can move to this front fender now. And now let's see, uh, this, this back end comes a little bit lower than the front end. And that starts to impact this shape here. But you know, sometimes like just building up some light and shadow, it tricks the mind into seeing it as a three-dimensional form, which then may re reveal something about the, the, the two-dimensional proportions. Okay. So we're almost an hour in and we're still just working on refining this sketch. Um, but yeah, kind of getting back to that topic of sketching versus drawing, like I said, I think I, I love the idea that sketches reveal something about the thought process where in, in sketching is done through drawing, but a drawing might be different. This may be more of a finished product. Um, and then let me see, I'm gonna just kind of indicate something in the front end. It gets a little bit hard because everything falls into shadow here. And then 
try to see the relationships between these forms here. It's the compound curves that are going to give us trouble. All right. All right. My headlights seem to have migrated a little bit, and that happens. It happens a lot with my portraits, I notice. I don't know if this is true with everybody else, but uh, with uh, it could be, essentially those headlights kind of like eyes, but I know that happens for me a lot in when I'm working on a portrait, I'll, I'll place the eyes and I'll keep adjusting them and eventually they'll just kind of move. I want to move up and down. <laughs> Next thing I know, everything's just kind of stretched and distorted um, and it all happens in these uh, kind of small increments that where you don't really notice it. So I got to step back and kind of double check those major proportions. And I noticed that, um, yeah, that headlight had migrated upward. All right, so this is feeling pretty good. I can think I can start to refine a little bit more now. So I need to think through how I want to do that, how I want to approach it. Um, let's see. Sally is saying, when you sign your name, you're drawing. <laughs> Making marks of straight and curved lines. Never be afraid. Nice. Um, yeah, Brenda, I think good. both parts of the same process. And then Jessica, yeah, the back tire is, is too large. I got to come back to that. I don't know when that came through, if that came through after I adjusted or before, but I think we were both kind of seeing the same kind of thing. I need to, uh, we'll kind of get in and refine that a little bit more. Kind of tricky back in there. And now it's, you know, these minor adjustments can make a big difference in the overall, uh, the overall drawing. Something, something still feels off on this. I feel like it's the relationship between the, the, that back fender, that back fender and that tire. Oh, I'll come back to that. I'm gonna wipe this all down now. Now let's go through and refine. How do I want to do this? Let's see. I think what I want to do is kind of start on the interior of the cab and build out from there. Um, and then Jessica's saying also the front fender needs to be a bit longer. Let me do some comparative measuring. So what I'm going to do, what I'm doing is I'm taking this distance here and I'm going to compare it to other dimensions. And what I'm seeing in this is so if I take from that turn on the shadow to the edge here, this dimension, it should equal this distance here to this front fender. And it's pretty darn close. Let me see. Yeah, I feel like that, that's pretty darn close. I might have to move things up a little bit, like right in there. So I'm feeling confident in that. And so, so part of what could be happening is, you know, the, each of these features can feel off, uh, um, but it's hard to know whether it's that feature or if it's everything else around it, right? So I wanna take this dimension. That seems to be correct. So what, the other thing I'm noticing is again that that turn from the shadow to the edge here, if we take that as a dimension and we turn it vertically here, it should equal from the base of the tire to then the top of the fender there. And it looks like it, looks like it does. And now let's compare that. I'm gonna use that as my base unit and compare that to other features. And so actually then this height equals that, should equal that height. Ah, this is where I'm off by a significant amount. Okay, everything's too tall or this is too, um, this is too short. Now, uh, so because I'm checking that by doing this, by uh, I compared this first, this dimension, that becomes my base unit. I compare it to this. And that's correct based on my, my interpretation of the, the reference. I'm comparing this to the reference photo. If I take this distance here, 
that same distance and I measure from the top of that fender upward, that should take me to the top of the cab. And now I, you can see I've got that cab running way up there. Um, and so now I'm in a, I'm in a bit of a bind because now I, this was my anchor, right? So do I change everything else? And if I do that, I'm gonna run that tire right off the bottom of the page. If I keep this dimension here and say that's correct, and I carry that down, that's gonna put that tire way down here. So I think what I have to do now is actually shrink that cab a bit. Um, and so, Jessica, awesome observations. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, yeah, it really got me thinking all about all this stuff. So I'm glad I didn't finish anything and I'm glad I saw that comment because I was getting ready to finish this. Um, let's see. A lot of comments coming in. So I think if I missed any important question, let me know. I, I just want to kind of get back to it. Um, Artistinia, well, I see you. Hello. I see you. Um, I apologize for misreading your your names it would be great if you have any questions so but back fender is the tire recessed too far possibly that's another good observation um, uh, Sally that's a good question so when you're erasing at first you still call it sketching I that's a really good question um, and I'd be open to challenging my response there I think, you know, the way I view it, I think it all comes down to the thought process, right? I think a sketch is about, for me, it's about working through things. It's about, it's about using the drawing process to refine, to refine what's in the mind. Whereas a drawing uh, as an art object might, um, might be kind of executing on what was revealed in the sketching process, if that makes sense. Um, okay, let me see. What am I doing here? I got I to gotta move everything down. Where do I need to move it down to? Well, this dimension here should take me essentially to the top, the hood of the car. So that means the hood should be right about here. I'm doing a, dropping a plumb line. That plumb line should, from here, should take me to that, that divider. Um, plumb line here should take me to this angle. Horizontal guide across here. This might need to drop down and actually just kind of shrink a little bit. And then because it's dark, I need to race this out a little bit. And that's going to drop everything else down. So if that becomes the top of the hood, let me shade this in and focus on that background. And then maybe what I'll do is use my eraser to sketch with. And now, so that's a good base unit, uh, that fender. And now let me compare that to Hood, uh, the, the, the cab. So what I'm seeing in the reference photo when I compare it is I'm taking this measurement again from that turn in the shadow to the edge here and that should equal the distance from the, the left to the right side here. And so when you're doing, when you're com you're doing a comparative measuring like this, I'm, I'm aligning this end of the pencil with this part of the truck putting my, sliding my finger down to where it meets to this. So I'm holding it over the reference photo and you got to keep your arm locked, kind of extended. And so that you're not adjusting it. So if you bring it in and out, it changes optically, it changes the, the proportions. All right, so. What's going on here? Let's see. I draw the plumb line here. That should take me about to this corner. Let 
I'm going to do is actually I'm going to I'm going to tone this and then switch back to this eraser to draw my lines because this is turning into a hot mess up here in it. Um, How's that feel? I think this can angle in a little bit more and then I'm just doing some drawing with the eraser now and that is that's feeling a little bit better now in terms of those overall proportions. All right. So this is really getting sketchy, huh? <laughs> Uh, but I think this is, again, this is, that's what this is all about. It's working through these problems. And to me, drawing is, it's a puzzle. It's a problem solving exercise. That's what makes it so exciting. Our brains are perfectly designed as puzzle solving machines and it loves to kind of work through um, puzzles and make discoveries. And I think nothing does that better than drawing for me. So I'm just kind of sketching with my eraser here. This is where it helps to have that toned paper first because that just makes it an option. Whereas if I was, if I didn't have that, if I just had the white paper, um, you know, I would just be kind of limited in my tools. So cleaning up some of the overruns while I'm doing this, but also kind of uh, indicating some additional features in the truck as I'm, as I'm discovering it and see if switching to this eraser helps to, um, helps to kind of help me articulate some of the uh, observations I'm making about the, um, the proportions. How's that working? Is that better? Let's see. I guess that's a question for me as well as you. <laughs> is this working? Um, I really wish we could all share each other. I'd love to see how everybody else's drawings are coming together. Um, so this seems off right here. Uh, I need to correct this. I think this needs to come in a little bit. Open up that space there. Come across. And I'm gonna kind of block in that shadow and then try to find the central axis here. All right, how's that? Okay, that feels all right. Okay, missed some, some of the uh, some of these questions here. Whoa, a lot of stuff came through. Um, Wilma is saying so much to learn, so much to pay attention to, and I'm trying to put vehicles into watercolor cityscapes. I have an awful time. That's that's tricky. Vehicles are are hard. Um, you know, I found that for me some of the the better um, interpretations of vehicles really just kind of treat them as simple abstract shapes and let the viewer's mind fill that in, um, in part just because that's, um, it, it, it can be tricky sometimes when um, you get kind of close and if it's not quite, quite there, it, it can feel a little uncomfortable. Um, but if you, in, in, if you kind of just keep it really simple and abstract then the, the viewer's mind, it doesn't, uh, you know, it just, again, it kind of works to fill in the rest. And it's a little bit more comfortable sometimes. All right, how's that? It's kind of moving quickly back and forth between 
the reference and the drawing. So I think what I can do now is, I mean, now let's start finishing. Everybody feel good about these? Anything major off that you see? <laughs> Man, you see that the old hood line was way up here. Had to bring that down quite a bit. Um, let me do some quick double checks in the proportions. So that right here, that, that's a little bit off there. Okay, so what I'm looking at now, again, taking that as a base dimension and comparing it to the length of that, the bed of the truck. And so what I'm seeing in the reference photos, if I take this and this, and I align this section with the back of the truck right here, should actually be over here. And so what that means is that that could be, that could just shrink everything back up in this section here. So it means I need to, if I take this, place that there, that means the back of the truck actually should move way up there. So what I'm gonna do, kind of tone that in, fill that in. Kind of focus on that negative shape. And then that, that may fix the problem we're having with that back tire feeling too large is that I had it, it had pushed it back too far. Um, this has been a really good one for problem solving and drawing. <laughs> You know, the whale, you know, would, like we didn't have nearly this much work to do in terms of correcting proportions. Um, this one is, this one's really becoming a bit of a challenge. All right, bring that up here. So I'm going to do some eraser drawing here, just looking at the shape of that back fender. And that's gonna really, it's gonna drastically affect how we capture that car, the tire, I mean, the car. Um, but this is, again, this is, this is where I get excited about drawing is it's all about the problem solving. And I love seeing the sketches of great artists and you can see their brain working through some things. And so if you get a chance to study, you know, somebody like Rembrandt or something like that, give that a shot, you know, try to find some of the old sketches. I mean, you learn so much. All right, now that should work better. Okay, if I take this dimension here, compare it to the bed, that aligns with the, that aligns with the reference better now. How do we feel about that? Any better? All right. All right, we have some, looks like we have some newbies here. Welcome. Good to see anybody here. Um, and then the cab door should be wider, Jessica. Let me check that. Thank you. So I need to, I think I need, if this becomes my kind of base unit, I need to sharpen that up a little bit. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, kind of refine that. 
we haven't talked about the ugly duckling stage in a while, but I think that's where we're at right now. So um, we, we, if you're new, you, you may not have heard us use this term before, but I know a lot of other, other artists that do is, but uh, most works of art go through an ugly duckling stage as we're trying to work through these problems. And so that's where we're at right now. And it's important to keep working through those those trouble spots because um, that's really where you get you get pushed you push through you got to power through some of those um, those trouble spots. That's where the good drawing happens. Um, but you get to this point in the ugly duckling stage where you feel like it's just not going to come together. Um, but if you if you keep powering through, you know maybe the drawing just turns into a hot mess. But you'll have at least learned something from it that then you can apply to another, um, you know, another version of that if you need to. So what I I encourage everybody to do is to stick with it when you get to that part where I'm at right now. Um, it's a little nerve wracking being live because uh, we all feel we're you know we're afraid of being judged, but. Um, I don't feel that from you all. You are all very kind. Um, but you know, if we kind of, it's often or it's not uncommon to um, to get to that ugly duckling stage where you feel like it's just not going to come together. And, we, and if you give up too early, you may not get to that point of realization that's necessary then even for another um, another version of it. So power through. The ugly duckling stage, that's, that's where the gold is right there, in the ugly, ugly duckling stage. All right, how's that? Everything feeling good there? What I need to do is, I've got these kind of halos around the edges. The edges are critical. And right now it's all kind of blotchy, so I'm going to smooth things out a little bit. And I like to let my marks overrun. And I'm still using that 3B. I haven't switched yet. But I may switch to that, the Onyx soon as, as, I, as I feel more confident in the proportions. I'll switch. Just kind of build up some tone there. And then erase out. some of the lights. All right, Whew. Art Bloom, everything looks perfect to me. Please don't change anything at all, sir. <laughs> all right, thank you. Um, Sally saying it's been ugly for a lot of time. Yes, this drawing has been. <laughs> um, I'll still stick with it. Uh, fix the shadow on the inside of the truck bed. The left side is way too high. Yes, oh, that's a good observation. Yes, yeah, since I moved this in, that changes that back, um, that back uh, tailgate there. So I'll, I'll get back in there and adjust that. I got a lot of cleanup to do along that edge um, because of that that old uh, the, those old lines. So I want to try to get rid of some of that blotchiness there. So um, I don't know about. Looks like it's got an old like box spring or you know bed frame or something in there. That I don't know what's in the back of that truck, but I don't know if I'm going to include that. I kind of like what's happening there. All right. Um, Greg is saying, I could be wrong, but the front hood should be approximately twice as long as the tailgate. My brain says the front hood should be longer. Let me double check that. That's a good observation. So if I take the tailgate, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. So this distance here um, should be one, two, Let's see where I need to from there to there. Got it. Yeah. So, um, Greg, that's a good observation. So, if that's the distance of the tailgate, I should be able to measure from this point here in the window 
across and that'll be equal twice the hood of the car. So something is wrong there now too. Boy, this is getting good. So now the question is, is do I keep this? Um, take the height of the hood there. So if I take this um, from this to this, this to height here, carry one, two, three. Ah, that should then bring this way over here. Huh. What am I doing here? Ah, yeah, there we go. This might help. So this distance here, again, from that turn in the shadow, let me kind of reestablish this. Been a good puzzle. If I take that, that should that puts this end here. So that moves everything out, just like you're saying there, Greg. Um, holy smokes, this thing has really moved around, hasn't it? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of movement happening in this drawing. So yes, as Sally says, we're in the ugly duckling stage for a long time. Um, so that brings that hood out even farther. Thank you for that, Greg. Let me kind of smooth that out. Got my eraser here. And then it's kind of light up along this edge. It drops into shadow. Okay. So yeah, this is really starting to be all about sketching, isn't it? You know, talking about, you know, working through visual problems. That's what we've been doing here. This is kind of throwing me off because I didn't, I didn't clean that up. Kind of focusing on drawing that shape here. Try to focus on the main form, not get consumed by any of those details at this point. This window here, I'm going to drop down. How's that now? What is off here is this angle. So let me Drop that down. So this is the way I, I view drawing a lot is it's almost like you're you know, making marks in the sand. You know, you want to be able to just move your things around, move your marks around on, on the surface. How's that? Does that feel any better? This this curve here is really throwing me off because it's not defined. You ever seen those, you know, like the, the car designers that do just amazing illustrations of cars, you know, whether they're, you know, a prototyping or something like that. It gives me a lot of respect for <laughs> for that type of work. It's not easy. Um, let's see here. I just need to clean up this front a bit because I got too many lines um, on the front there. And so I need to establish that central axis. How's that? Any better? 
Um, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. I see a question from Bottom Dwellers Aquatics. And your front fender tapers off towards the back and is slightly longer in the photo than the sketch. All right. I got a, that's a, that's a good observation there. I need to I, think I need to sharpen up things a little bit. I'll get, thank you for that, um, Bottom Dwellers Aquatics. Um, yeah, and then Bottom Dwellers, shadow and light, reflected light are, uh, there are no hard lines in real life. So that's, I'm glad you brought that up because we talk about that a lot in this series. And then I think my intention going into this was to make it more linear, like using contour lines far more and kind of just suggesting light and shadow. But it's hard to break that. It's like so now I'm kind of in this hybrid world where I'm kind of using line in some areas and light and shadow in other areas, and I've kind of caught myself in this no man's land that I think I need to pull myself out of and move one direction or the other. I either make it more about light and shadow and about value relationships at the edges, or more linear based and where it's more about that contour line. Um, Brenda saying I never imagined to love drawing a truck. Awesome. <laughs> But, and Greg, yeah, I'm mentioning Paul. Paul, yeah, he's an artist here in Denver. I haven't met him, but he does some amazing pen and ink work of uh, these these trucks, and he nails a perspective every time. You can see that he really spent a lot of time with it. So check that out. Um, let's see. I look at the bottom dweller saying, look at the driver's side top corner of the windshield. Uh, in the photograph, and you're drawing. There's a difference. Uh, yeah, like right up in this area here. Yeah, I've got to keep cleaning this area up. Um, yeah, and then this bottom edge. What I'm trying to do is I kind of had lost sight of that, that broad angle. So I established that there um, to kind of make sure that I was correct because I had it kind of slanted up too much. So I want to get that main angle correct first and then kind of work that curve in here. That you're that you're observing to. That's such a key feature in the truck that you've locked onto, um, and so I got to keep that in mind as I'm working on this. Is try to get that curve right, and then um, as uh, as you mentioned before, I think that was bottom dwellers. That I'm kind of in that hybrid space between light and shadow and line, and and so it's kind of throwing things off. So my brain is interpreting some of these as shadows, but some of them as contour lines and is throwing everything off a little bit. Um, and JC, <laughs> deep breath everybody, let them fix one thing at a time. Uh, no, I, I welcome all these observations. That's what this is all about. So thank you everybody. Um, but I do have to catch up a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> um, bottom dweller, there's no problem on the observation. I don't mean to keep pointing these out. No, I'm wel I welcome all those observations. Um, I, I just, I, I may not get to some of them. Uh, so if I, if I, seem to skip over a question or a comment. Uh, I apologize for that. Um, oh, I'm sorry to hear that you gave up on drawing. That is, hopefully you can bring that back. Sounds like a rough time for you there, bottom dweller. So, um, uh, bottom dwellers, a lightweight can completely change drawing. Also, I do tattoos. Awesome. Um, yeah, like I imagine in tattoo work that there the line weight and everything is a key element in that. That's a pretty awesome art form. All right, so I think what um, what do I want to do? I'm just going to keep going. This is turning out to be very different. I'm really excited because I feel like you know in 84 episodes of this drawing show, I feel like my drawings have started to become a bit kind of habitual, and you can start to kind of anticipate what your drawings are going to look like. Um, and this is kind of changing things up, which I was I was hoping for in my in this exercise. I just didn't. I think I had in my mind how I wanted the drawing to go. I make it more linear, um, but that's just it's not not what's happening right now. So I'm going to let it go the way it needs to go. That's what this show is all about. You know, this all started because when we found ourselves stuck at home so much, and I thought, well, don't we, I need to draw a lot more, improve my drawing skills to, to help boost my 
uh, landscape painting and um, it's forced me to really start to take more time uh, especially with proportions and perspective things like that all right so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna kind of focus on this I feel like now maybe <laughs> Now maybe I think I have the a, a more correct proportion uh, in there, at least closer. I think I'll have to adjust this, but I, I don't I don't feel like any adjustments I make down here are going to be so drastic that they're going to run me off the page or anything like that. So um, I'm going to switch now to really starting to refine this cab. And I don't think this is going to be kind of fully rendered, but let me see. Let me see what we can do. So just using the side of the pencil, I'm going to block this in and think more about the structure of the cab through the window than anything. And then I can clean up the window on top of that as we go. Um, And I kind of like how this side of the cab falls into shadow and it's generally a little bit lighter back there. Um, so I might, I might play with that a little bit. Uh, now let's see. Now the, this curve is really kind of an interesting one. And I'm just looking at that angle um, here between that divider and on that edge. And what happens is it's almost horizontal. And I'll let some of those edges just fade away, get some lost and found edges there. Now if I look at that second part of the window here, I want to maintain that overall angle, but then also find the curve there. And then if there's any, if anybody has any questions, let's see. Um, yeah, and then Sue's saying the front looks like it's been smooshed back. Yeah, there's no real dimension there. I, I may have to, yeah, pop that out when I get down there. Um, let's see. I'm not a bunch of dollars now. Fix it all now. I will, I'll do it all right now. Uh, who knows? I mean, it may not ever get fixed. I, you know, there's probably going to be lots of problems with this. Uh, you know, that's that's what drawing is all about. I think sometimes we put so much pressure on ourselves to do great drawings. It can be really freeing just to draw and mess up. And I, I feel like this has kind of encouraged me to do that more. Um, yeah, I bottom dollar. If I see that comment you're making, that's got to be really rough. Um, whew. That's uh, got to make you think about, you know, how, what it means to draw um, for everybody. But, um All I can say is hang in there. Um, uh, bottom dollars, how often do I just live stream? So we meet every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, and you can find all the old episodes um, going back a year now. I can't believe we've, we're a year into this whole thing. huh? Um, I think... A, just about, we're a couple weeks shy of a full year when we started this show. And so, um, I just want to, I don't want to go too detailed into that, in that window, because we got to move this thing along. I don't want to keep everybody too far. I like to generally keep things down to about two hours. Um, and so one of the things I'm looking at back right here is that I, I don't want to segment the, the interior of the cab too much, uh, you know, in that you know, treating this as a separate section from this. I'm trying to see that whole form because you can kind of see that rear window kind of work through the drawing here. Uh, 
I think that's probably sufficient for that. You can see the difference in mark when I switch to this tripod grip um, versus the overhand. Uh, and that's you know something that we talk about a lot as well is just playing around with the different grips. I don't often draw with this tripod grip. It's kind of fun. I'm enjoying it. I usually use an overhand. And we'll sharpen up some of these areas here. And what's nice now is that, you know, since we've worked out most of the major proportion issues, I can just focus on mark making and um, kind of more of those details. So in areas like this, um, you know, I'm working on that dark part of the 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 wind the, or this this uh, door window. As I'm as I'm darkening it, um, you can see that I'm running right over this edge here because then I can come back in with the eraser and clean that up. Um, and I find that that works better for me than trying to kind of just tighten up my marks and get right into that edge. So. Um, Bottom dweller is saying, well, have you ever tried drawing a picture using a square grid? Yeah, that's, that's something we, um, that's a, we've kind of talked a bit about in this as well. Um, I was actually been thinking a lot about grids lately because it can be an effective tool to, for drawing proportions. And when we're looking at plumb lines and horizontal guides uh, that was we were doing earlier, um, that's essentially a way of gridding off your drawing. Um, I think for me, if you are using a grid to transfer an image, what works for me is when I started to think about the grid differently. So when I first started using a grid, it, it was all about looking at one square, doing that, moving the next one, the next one. Um, and in general, it would all line up. Um, but it started to work better for me when I, um, I started to look at the features where they, where they overlap the line. So, and that's essentially what we're doing when we're using plumb lines in a drawing is you're, we're creating a, a grid. It just happens to be a, a different kind of proportion, a different dimensional grid. Um, but you are, it's all about studying that path, the vertical and horizontal paths, and paying attention to what intersects with that path, if that makes sense. Uh, so I'm just kind of throwing that out there as something to consider as you're working, if you're working with a grid. Um, I, like I said, I kind of struggled with a grid because everything, it felt, still felt too fractured. And then it was a matter of trying to fit all these pieces together, just kind of keep tweaking them until it, they fit properly. Um, but when I started just, again, focusing on looking at those, what's crossing over the lines rather than what's in the squares, it worked better for me. All right, so I'm gonna darken this and I'm gonna run these lines vertically to kind of reference that the vertical plane of that tailgate. I'm just going to eliminate whatever that thing is in the back. And then I'm going to erase this highlight here. And then, I mean, this is where you could use a, a straight edge or something if you want to mask off some areas. I don't think I'm going to use one here. And then this, this whole back area is all sorts of messed up. So I need to fix it. What am I gonna do? Um, I still don't know. <laughs> kind of like, this is, I, I can't wrap my head around this for some reason. Um, and I don't know whether it's like it's just today or whether it's the truck. Um, but I don't know what I want to do for that. And so I'm going to let it sit again for now. And I'm going to, I'm going to just push that off for later because I want to keep drawing. All right. So I'm going to clean this up here. And it's, it's interesting, you know, with this happens all the time um, in drawing and, you know, we, we kind of calibrate to the drawing as we're, you know, as we're working. 
and you know it's really easy for you know me as the artist to kind of lock into what's there and not see something that's off right in front of my eyes and that's why it often is really helpful to have a partner in drawing like this like we're you guys are helping me through this and if you have somebody that you're drawing with that can provide you some really helpful feedback that can be really valuable they can you know by just sharing their observations and um, because we get kind of locked in we get tunnel vision sometimes um, and we can have uh, you know something that's off and we just don't see it and so having some space from that that's where like setting you know stepping away from it looking at it from a distance upside down taking a photo of it all of those are tools to to change the context of the artwork so that you see it with more fresh eyes fresher eyes um, And so having you all kind of share those observations is really helpful to me. And like I said, if you could find somebody who can do that for you, that's really awesome. Uh, I want to kind of suggest this. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, for comments. Um, Uh, Greg is saying, I use the grid in an exact way. Once I get the proportions down, I don't use it anymore and render without it. Nice. Um, there is sketch uh, Shenaver. It looks like you're drawing a truck at a, the truck at a different angle than your picture, which will throw off all your measurements. Yeah, it's, it is. A, I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get at the right angle. <laughs> so I wish it were some sort of artistic interpretation that I could throw out there, but it's not. No, I'm just not doing it right, but that's what drawing's all about. Um, that's what keeps you moving on the next one, right? Is that, um, and this is what I say, you, um, you, know, you do your best and when, you, when you're done, it's really, really important to identify what can be improved, like what you wanna do for the next one, or not, not even necessarily just improve, but like, you know, what, what can you do differently next time? Um, but also then what, are you doing right so that you can transfer that to the next drawing? But I don't know, it, it kind of makes me depressed to think of doing a drawing that I'm 100% happy with um, because so much of it is about getting to a spot where you're, um, you're analyzing the work and you're like, oh, it's so close, but not quite, or I didn't quite get that. I mean, I gotta try that again until I get it right. And uh, that's so much of what drives painting and drawing for me that, um, I get kind of scared of the idea of doing something that I don't want to improve on. So that's kind of what this show is all about too, is, is and that becoming part of our process. We're always improving, we're always challenging ourselves. Um, okay. Uh, a lot of comments here today. This is awesome. Thank you, everybody. Um, yeah, and Klaus says that's a great uh, comment here. True, at a certain point, you're just saturated. Yes, indeed. Just look at it the next day or turn it. <laughs> yep. Um, awesome, everybody. Bottom Dwellers Artist Network, do you paint it all? I, I, so I'm primarily a, a landscape painter. Um, and that's kind of what was driving this show is that when I couldn't really get out and paint, I thought, well, I need to draw. That's kind of what's holding me back in my landscape paintings. I, paint, I like to paint on location. Um, and, and I think it's, you know, for me as a, in, when it, when, when translating it to, um, to painting, it's, it's all about kind of just accessing those proportions a little bit more quickly. And when I'm on location, you know, the, the, when I can get to that quickly, I can then focus on color. Uh, I can, uh, you know, focus on composition a little bit more, more quickly. Because that, what was holding me up is, you know, I might get the colors right, but then um, it, uh, 
you know, something just slightly off in the drawing and the proportions that, that we're, something always can work on. Okay, let's see. So now just continuing to refine this. I'm not seeing this. I can, this is, I can feel it happening in my brain. My brain is freaking out right now <laughs> because I'm, I'm compensating for the perspective on this back fender for some reason, and I'm not seeing it as the two-dimensional abstract shape that it is, uh, I'm seeing it as this three-dimensional form and I keep wanting to turn it and draw it in profile. Um, so that's, and I'm just kind of recognizing what's happening in my brain and trying to fight those, fight that thing. So um, I don't know, that's why I love drawing so much. Painting, it's because it's, uh, it's accessing what's happening in the brain. I don't know if anybody really spent much time looking at the the images of the cave paintings in like Alaska. I believe Werner Herzog has a cool documentary about that. Um, but it, what I love about that is that you can be looking at those marks on the wall on this you know forty thousand years old and recognize the thinking that goes into it because it's so similar to the decisions we make today as artists. Um, Fascinating stuff. Just gonna clean up this a little bit more. That's starting to get a little bit better. Man, I've really, that original fender was like way back here. <laughs> it wasn't even close to begin with, but that's awesome. It, uh, it's getting better now. Kind of lightening that up to help reveal that negative space a little bit more, and then I can smooth it out. Um, something is still really wrong here. Now here's what I need to do. I need to bring the drawing a little bit closer. This is when working kind of like a site size method a bit more, really having the drawing and the photo right next to one another can be helpful. Um, I need to bring this over even more. So I, you know, I haven't talked about kind of perspective tools or anything, but um, I'm really just kind of, uh, mostly what I'm looking at are intersection points and angles to try to get this tire to work for me. Something is off. Got to keep coming in there. It's this um, this shape back in here. I'm trying to identify both the positive and negative space. I don't draw vehicles very much. I just realized just not a subject. I need to because that's why we're doing this is practice, right? So. Um, you see, like I said, you see these great, you know, automotive illustrators. They've really got it down. And that's why we challenge ourselves with a daily puzzle. All right. How does that feel? Is that, I feel like that's better. Looks better. <laughs> um, you know, when I, when I get really struck, we talk, or stuck, you know, when we, we talked about the grid method, um, I, if, if I really need to nail those proportions, I just find directly tracing works really well um, rather than um, rather than messing around with the, the, um, the grid. But I, I, I just dig the, um, again, the problem solving and, and especially when working from life to, uh, 
and trying to get those proportions, the angles right, just by sight, using all the tools that we've been covering today. Angle sighting, comparative measuring, things like that. Um, understanding linear perspective. So just using the, the rubber eraser, I'm using a really light pressure, so it's kind of blending a bit as well as, um, as, as well as lifting material off the page. But all right, that's starting to get there, but it cuts under a bit more. There's the bulge in the tire that I got to capture a bit. We've talked about it before, but really the master of these compound curves is uh, Degas. Holy smokes, that guy can draw. So I'm working back in here, and I'm just, again, looking at the relationship between the tires, the uh, other forms. How are we doing on time? All right, an hour and a quarter in. So this is taking a lot longer. Um, but it's so much fun. I'm having a lot, I'm having a lot more fun with this than I anticipated. Um, uh, Bottom dweller is I was never happy with what I do, no matter how people like it, even some of the awards I got for pictures I feel like I should have got. Nice. Yeah, it's tough, you know, getting feedback from people and knowing what they like and what they respond to versus what you like as an artist and what you're responding to. And um, it's a tricky one. You know, this one is all about just the practice of drawing. We're just here to get better. And you all are very patient and supportive, and I greatly appreciate it. <laughs> it is a bit vulnerable. I don't think we can ever get over that vulnerability, uh, you know, having work put out there. Um, but yeah, I kind of know that feeling of, you know, I'll do some, some work that I'll be really happy with, and I'll show it to people, and it's just crickets. And it is obvious that they have no reaction to it. Um, and then I'll do one work that I'm ugh, just not happy with at all. And it'll totally, you know, uh, you know, resonate with somebody else. So it's hard to, hard to know. So I'm just kind of going through, we're going to focusing on sharpening up the edges. And again, I'm in this kind of hybrid space of uh, contour lines and shading. Um, and, you know, kind of, and so I'm kind of interpreting the photograph in a way that we haven't done much before. Generally, what we do in this in the show is um, interpret the um, interpret it more directly at, from the photograph. Um, and so this is kind of a fun fun one because we're I mean we're you know, of course ignoring everything in the background and really just trying to understand the form of the truck. And the more we do it, the better you're going to get at it. Something seems off right there. I feel like I need to bring this out. This angle seems seemed off. say I'm getting a little tired though I can feel my brain kind of shutting down um, uh, and bottom dwell is yeah different size artist stencil it's always nice to have around I haven't, yeah, I haven't, I've never used that used them before but I can imagine you know, I see uh, some of these automotive illustrators that have all these special tools that they use it's pretty awesome all right so I think what I want to do is just, I need to clear my brain a little bit before I move on to this next part. <sighs> kind of shake things out a little bit. How am I feeling? Um, feeling pretty good. 
about this so far. Just suggest that door handle with some light marks. Some dimensional hatching, uh, you know, all these different terms that we use. You know, there's, you know, cross contour lines, there's cross hatching, hatching, dimensional hatching, so hatch marks that really kind of line with cross contour marks. Um, they combine those two so that you, you're really reinforcing the dimension of your materials. Actually, what I want to do is just kind of lighten up that background here a little bit. Needed eraser time. But this is, yeah, this is kind of a good indication or, you know, representation of that, what I was saying earlier, that marks are thoughts, you know, and I think sometimes, um, you know, I've known people that they don't draw as much as they'd like because there can be this idea that, you know, drawing is about the drawing, you know, it's, it's, it's the art form of it all and that somehow choosing to draw means that you're, um, you're identifying as an artist uh, and it can sometimes be kind of destructive in a way because you know, calling yourself an artist, can be, it can be a loaded term. We all have different understandings of what that means. And sometimes just drawing is, for me is also just a great way to solve problems and discover the world. And if we stop and really try to, you know, like if we stop ourselves from doing that because we think that we have to, you know, bring with it all the, the baggage of, of what it means to be an artist, then we kind of, miss out you know on it you know it's just like the difference between dancing for fun just because it feels good to move your body versus feeling like oh I have to master it in order to go out on the dance floor all right so what I did there is I just lightened up that background so I could play with an alternating sequence of light and dark so this being a little bit darker than that this being lighter than that background and so when you play with those alternating sequences it can really bring a drawing together All right, and that's just kind of setting me up for then down here. Just doing some kind of quick check-in. This shape needs to be refined a little bit farther. And this is where I might and you know, use the eraser here. And then lift off some. And again, play with that alternating sequence of light and dark. So then, yeah, darken this up a little bit more. This is going to get dark here. Okay, whew! Holy smokes, this one's, this one's beat me up. <laughs> Um, let's see, Zephy Lily, are you using a table easel or drawing flat? This is almost flat, um, but it's at, you know, probably a 10, 15 degree angle. So this is, um, oh gosh, I can't remember. It's a, uh, it's a, one of the best company brand easels. Um, and it, it can go vertically. It can also lay down totally horizontally, which is a, I like. So, um, yeah, bottom dollars. So yeah, it, it, it's interesting. To, yeah, kind of talking about it. Like if I if I need to nail the proportions, and there's so many tools that we can use, I just go straight to tracing. That works for me. I might just get get beyond there. Uh oh. What? All right, everybody. I think my camera has decided to quit. Whew. Uh, I don't know what happened there. Let's see. Let's see if it stays on now. It's plugged in, so it shouldn't die. Apologize for that. Not sure what's going on there. <laughs> it's a little sketchy. That happened the very first episode, I believe. Um, 
All right, but it looks, I think we're, I think we're back. Looks like everything's back, okay. Um, so we're about two hours in and we're, I think we're just gonna keep going. Thank you all for sticking with me. If you're new, if you're just joining us, what you're watching is drawing together with Artist Network, but my camera has decided to crap out. So um, I don't know if there's really, like I said, we're two hours in. I haven't had that happen in a long time. Something's going on with my camera. So I think we're gonna call it for the day. Now, so check out the link. I put it at the top of the, uh, the discussion thread. Let me see if I can post that there. I'm gonna post it again here. Um, and that's where you can see the, the final drawing. So when I'm done with this, I'll post it up there. You can check it out. And I'd love to see everybody else's drawing. So um, I, I think my camera's just telling me it's time to go. It decided that the battery is dead, even though it's been plugged in and charging this whole time. Um, I, maybe it's overheated or something. So I appreciate it. This has been a blast. I've had so much fun today. Thank you so much. I appreciate all the uh, observations, the support, the help with this. I'm just gonna take it offline, keep working on this. I hope you are as well. Meet us again Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, the uh, subject, I don't know what the subject is, I can't remember. Um, but it's gonna be a good one because I hope it is. I think it's a figure, I think I'm gonna do a seated figure. If it's not next week, that's gonna be coming up um, soon as well. But all right, thank you all, have a great week. If you're living in Colorado, we got a big storm coming it looks like. so. Hang in there. Hopefully the, the snow is not too bad. Um, and I will see you all next week.